Today we're going to talk about how to use the grid system in Ionic 2. Uh, so the grid is a component that Ionic provides that allows you to create complex layouts uh, in your applications. So when we're using uh, just basic lists and uh, other basic components, uh, a lot of the time you just want that component to take up the whole view. We'll just have a scrolling list or something like that. Uh, but sometimes you want to create more complex layouts, uh, maybe for say some kind of timer application, you might have uh, laps that the uh, that the person has run the time. Um, maybe splits for each lap that they have completed. You will show the time uh, below that. So we can create these really complex layouts, and we need a way to do that. Now, if you've worked with uh, CSS frameworks before, things like Twitter, Bootstrap, or uh, the Foundation framework. Uh, this concept will be very similar to you, it just uses basic rows and columns to uh, create these layouts and it uses uh, Flexbox in CSS to achieve this. Uh, you don't really need to know the intimate details of how Flexbox works, you can just uh, get by with just using this grid uh, in its basic form, but if you do have more advanced knowledge of how Flexbox works, you'll be able to uh, fine tune uh, the details of your layout more easily. So to start off with, I'm just going to show you what it looks like, uh, a really basic version. And so the concept is basically that you have this uh, ion grid component, and that's just going to contain everything for us. And then inside of uh, the grid, you'll have rows and columns. Uh, so we'll have rows on the outside, and then inside of these rows, uh, we will have the columns. And so I can put multiple columns inside of a row, I can have multiple rows, I could then even put another row inside of a column, and then put a column inside of that, and then another row. Uh, you can get really specific and create really intricate layouts, uh, but most of the time it's probably going to be pretty basic. Uh, so just as an example, if I drop a image in here, I'll just use uh, a placeholder image. And I'll just drop another column in here as well. And so just now we'll have a single row with two images side by side because we have two columns. So if we jump into the browser to take a look at that, I'm already serving the application here. Uh, you can see we have the two boxes sitting side by side. Uh, so there are much more advanced ways that we can control the layout, how wide the columns are, and so on. Uh, but I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, first want to do a bit of an exercise of uh, just thinking in rows and columns I guess uh, showing you how you might break down a typical layout so I've got a screenshot of uh, my Twitter profile uh, from the Twitter mobile application here and what I'm gonna do is just run through how I might break this down into uh, a grid layout into rows and columns so I'm gonna get uh, do the rows in uh, so red color here uh, and so first uh, I'll just break everything into the rows and then I'll break them down into the columns uh, so we might have a row at the top here to contain that uh, header image uh, we could have another row here to contain all of this information uh, another row um, this is a probably a good example here so I could do a row here and have everything uh, styled with CSS in here. So obviously the uh, my name here, my Twitter handle sits above the rest of the content. Uh, so I could just work with this single row and use CSS uh, in different ways to position this how I want it. Or I could split this up into two separate rows. Uh, so there is no specific rules for exactly how you're going to have to break up your content into rows and columns. It could be really simple or really complex, but um, once you get a sense of it and how everything works, uh, you should be able to decide what's going to work best for you. And so we might have another row here and here. And again, this could all just be one row as well. And we could just position this with CSS or we can split it up into two rows. Uh, we'll have another row for the segment, the tweets, media and likes segment here. And this is just, um, Ionic provides a component, a segment component to do this. So. Uh, you can just have the single row and then just drop that component in there. And then we'll have another row for uh, the uh, tweet here. So now I'm going to go through and split those rows up into columns. So I'll just switch colors here. We'll use a, a blue instead. 
And so if I start up here, I might break these up into, uh, I might create a column there, one here, and for each of these buttons, uh, it went a bit far. So each button can have its own column. And again, maybe we don't want to do that. Uh, instead, perhaps you want this whole section here, it could just be one column. And then you just place these buttons side by side with CSS. Again, uh, it's up to you how you want to do it. Uh, this is all just sort of one uh, column here, so we still will have a column, but that's just going to be a single column that makes up the entire width of the screen here. Uh, we could split this row up into two columns here, and this one as well. And this one, again, is just a single column for the whole row. And then for the tweet, uh, this could be a column here, and we split that up into the left and right here. and we could get more complicated here, and I'm going to do it just to show you an example of what you can do. Uh, most likely I would just style all this with CSS and not worry about complicating the uh, rows and columns more than I have already done. But if you wanted to, you could split this up even further. So I could create another row inside of this column that's going to split up the top and the bottom here. And then inside of that again, I could create another column inside of that row. Uh, now this is definitely something I wouldn't do, um, but let's pretend that we had uh, some content here that we wanted to sit side by side. I could split that up into another two columns here. And then again, if I wanted to get even more complicated, I could then split that column up into another two rows. And to get really ridiculous, I could then split that row up into another two columns. So you can see how you can really drill down. Uh, I have a lot of nesting here to create some really, really complex layouts. Uh, but a lot of the time it's going to be simple and a lot of the time it probably should be as simple as possible. This this layout would be a bit of a mess in, in the HTML. So generally, yeah, try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, use just basic CSS positioning to uh, control the layout where you can uh, but if you need to create a really complex layout like this you can do it uh, with the grid. Uh, if that process didn't make a whole lot of sense to you don't worry too much just play around with columns and rows a bit and you'll eventually just get how they work. Uh, it can be a little bit confusing at first I think. Okay now that we've covered the basics of how it works I want to show you how you can control the columns and rows in a bit more depth. So right now I just have and uh, two columns set up with no uh, width specified. So they're just going to uh, take up an equal amount of space. But if I wanted to uh, get more specific here, and let's say I only want this column to take up 25% of the width, and I want this one to take up the remaining 75, I can just specify 25 and 75. If I save that and take a look at what happens, you can see that this image now has been sort of shoved over into this smaller portion and the other image has the rest of the uh, row. And it might be easier to see what's happening if I inspect this now. So you can see if I hover over this first column, it's only taken up a really small portion of the screen, but the second column takes up a large portion. So that's 25% versus 75%. So then I could also throw in another row here and maybe on this one we want, uh, we'll say 80% for the first one and 20 for the second. So we'll save that and take a look. And now you can see that that's taking up 80% of the screen and that's taking up 20. Now you can't use whatever percentages you want. Uh, in general you just supply width, dash and then the percentage that you want. Uh, but there are specific uh, widths that you can use. Uh, so if you come into the documentation and check out the grid section, you'll find a list of uh, all the widths that you can use. And so uh, any of these basically. So if you wanted to use 85, you can't do that by default with the, the grid system here. As well as supplying a width, you can also supply uh, an offset. So by default here, this um, column that's taking up 75% of the width is sitting right next to the one that takes up 25%. Uh, so let's say if I wanted to change this to say that they're, they're both 25, we'll see what that looks like. Uh, looks like. 
So again, they're, they're sitting side by side here. If I inspect that, we can see that they're the same width now, but they sit side by side. So let's say I don't want that. I actually want this, uh, I want this uh, second column to sit on the other side of the screen. And so what I could do is supply an offset value. So if I say offset 50, that's going to push that across 50% uh, of the screen. So now it sits on the other side. And so you can apply that to any column and basically it's just going to just push it across to the right, um, whatever values you specify. So if I come in here now and just inspect these again, you can see that first one is still taking up 25%. And so is this one, but we also have that big margin on there now to push that column across. So let's take a look at another example. Uh, we're going to see what happens. I'm just going to get rid of this second row. And we're going to get rid of the offset as well. So if I put in four of these columns, then that's going to equal 100%. So it's going to take up the entire uh, width of the page here. But if I was to add uh, another one, then of course that's going to be too big. Uh, it's going to occupy more than the width that we currently have. So we'll see what happens when we do that. So we still only see the four because the fifth one is off the page now. And so I'm going to do a bunch of these actually. So I'm going to show you something that you can do, which is a pretty common use case. So I have a bunch of these uh, these pictures now, uh, but. I can only see the four of them, the rest have gone off screen. Ideally what I want to happen is for these to keep flowing downwards as it gets to the end of the screen. I want it to drop to the next line and display in this big grid uh, gallery-like uh, format. And to do that, uh, it's quite simple. What we need to do is come onto this ion row here and supply the wrap attribute. So if I just write ion row wrap, save that and take a look, you can see that those uh, columns are now wrapping down onto the next row. Even though we have this single row, it is now expanded to fit these all onto the page. So I can just keep uh, pasting as many of these as I like, and it's just going to keep flowing down the page. Now, another really interesting thing you can do with the grid system is supply the responsive attribute, uh, which is actually a good way to create different layouts for. Uh, say phone versus a tablet versus a big desktop screen or something like that. So what you can do is come over to this ion row again and supply responsive and then we can supply one of three uh, values here. We can do LG for large, MD for medium or SM for small. So if I set this to responsive large and save that, it's going to set that responsive breakpoint uh, at a, a large setting. So this iPhone 5 now uh, falls within or below that range and so the uh, the columns uh, break, the rows break into uh, different rows here rather than uh, filling up the entire width of the screen. So if I was to say get rid of this emulator and we'll try and make it big enough, there we go, so around, I'm not sure what the exact point is actually, so that's, uh, it looks like 1024, so 1024 pixels those uh, columns will start flowing underneath each other instead of flowing across the screen. And so then I could also change that to say small and that's going to decrease where that breakpoint is. So now if I try shrinking the screen I'm going to be able to go a lot further until we hit that breakpoint. And so that's around, what's that one? That's 567 is the point where that uh, breakpoint is hit and then the columns will start flowing uh, beneath each other. The, the flex direction gets changed. So that's just another cool thing that you can do with the grid uh, to perhaps create some different layouts based on whether the user is on a phone or a tablet. Okay, so I hope this is a decent introduction into how to use the grid with rows and columns in Ionic 2. Uh, it can be hard to wrap your head around and uh, it probably requires a bit of playing around and getting used to and especially if you start looking into um, how Flexbox works uh, and things like that. But hopefully this did a good enough job at explaining the basics uh, so that you can start using them in your own applications. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.